Today we'll be talking about how to record a song on your iPhone. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now, if you've got one of these, or maybe one of these, and maybe you've got one of these, or one of these, that's probably too small. So you should get one of these. But you may want to use one of these. You may be thinking to yourself, how can I record, mix and release a song completely from my iPhone or iPad? Well, I haven't got a clue, but I know a man who does and his name is Pete Johns. He's got an awesome YouTube channel all about recording, mixing and releasing songs from your iPhone or iPad. So I had a chat with Pete. It was the longest chat. So you might want to get one of these, uh, possibly one of these. Okay, folks, so here we are with Pete Johns from Studio Live today. G'day, Pete. How are you? G'day, Mike. I am doing exceptionally well, thank you. That's great to hear. I'm very excited to have you on board, Pete, here. Um, I've been watching your channel for about the last three months or so, and in that time you've grown enormously because when I started watching you, you were sort of just over 6,000 uh, subscribers, and now you're over 9,000. That's enormous growth, so congratulations on that. Congratula congratulations. And um, how are you feeling about that? Is it keeping you busy? Uh, yeah, it's keeping me very busy. It's it's fantastic and it's it's very humbling. So uh, it, it is amazing that we live in a, in a world where we can uh, put videos out there and that we have so many people that are interested in audio and interested in recording their own audio. And uh, yeah, I know I've, uh, you've probably found the same on your channel that, uh, yeah, the, the number of people that just come to me and say, hey, your, your videos helped me out. And, and that's kind of what keeps encouraging me to keep making videos and to, to keep putting it out there. Absolutely, absolutely. And you've certainly got a lot to offer people. I must say, very, very impressed with your channel. Um, and I guess I'd like to start off by just sort of talking a little bit about that before we get into the content of it. What kind of made you want to start a YouTube channel at all and get involved? Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting because uh, I started. Uh, my story is pretty typical of most people um, around my age, where I played in bands back in my teens and back in the nineties. And then you know life gets in the way a little bit, and you have you mm -hmm. have kids, and you have a career, and you have a full time job. And then it was only about three years ago that I started really getting back into music, and I thought it's actually kind of ridiculous that I'm not actually writing and playing and recording my own music. So I did what most people do, which is reach out, and YouTube was just blowing up. At that point so I go to YouTube and I get some help and I start recording and then I find that everything is really complicated and everything that I looked at it was it was everything was taken a bit too seriously and I just wanted to get in and start recording and start getting my own material recorded so that's when I stumbled across GarageBand on my phone at the time and on my iPad and thought hey this is a good way this is a way I can just capture my own music and and can record that so I went out and looked for tutorials about GarageBand and they were really lacking so there's a lot of garage band tutorials for the mac but for the ipad and the iphone we didn't have much out there so i thought well i, I need to learn i need to teach myself and as i was learning i thought hey i can make some videos about this and just throw them up there might be some other people that are interested and at that point you know i had 100 or 200 uh, subscribers on my channel and then over the last three years i've just been putting out a couple of videos every week for, for the last year and yeah we've, we've grown to where we are today so yeah it's, it's been very humbling but it's been a really a really awesome experience and being able to share sort of my love of music but also help a lot of other people as I say on the channel create record and release their own music that's been the really rewarding part of doing all this well that's that's just really good to hear and um, I'll just before we get stuck in to that actually and I want to get a little bit more into garage band because we've some people might not quite know what it is yet and and we'll get into that and and so we've diverted from our scripts and just a full disclosure to the viewers we we had a little script here me and pete um for this and um so you know, that's gone and uh, full disclosure to pete um there could be some surprise so sub surprises in this for you so for the uninitiated because i think there's people out there who perhaps they use things like pro tools or logic and cubase and all of those lovely pieces of software and they can do awful an awful lot with them 
and they can do some awful things with them actually yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um they're probably and, and I'll, I'll count myself as one of these people up until a few months ago fairly cynical about the idea of using that device in their pocket to multi-track record you know so the vision is is that they're going to sort of fudge together some sort of microphone that goes into that tiny jack in the bottom of their phone and they're going to be able to record you know a couple of tracks or something with some rubbish effects and so now i know from watching your channel that's not the case but can you explain to us um, some of those misconceptions so let's start off with the equipment for example um, now i know that people could start off just by using the mic on their phone but where's it at really what's the ideal situation and where are you at with it yeah, and, and you're, you're spot on. The, the big misconception folks have is that when they think garage band, they think of Steve Jobs and John Mayer standing on stage in two thousand, the mid-2000s and, and saying, Here is a, here's a, a musical tool for people who aren't musicians. And I think mm. that stigma has stayed with garage band for a long time, whereas mm. what we're finding now is that, like any other, the, the beauty part is we're in digital music audio platforms where you're pushing ones and zeros around. So it's all about the quality of what you actually are putting into it as opposed to the quality of the piece of software so whether you are on Logic or Pro Tools or, or a GarageBand you're all just recording a 24-bit audio file in probably 44 kilohertz sound so sorry to geek out for a minute there but you're just recording the same quality and, and that's what we can do with GarageBand now is you can you can set your phone up and you can record into your phone and you'll get surprisingly good results and you've got 32 tracks to record so you can overdub with just a pair of earbuds and your phone and I've, I've recorded the entire demos doing that but what most folks don't know Know, is that you can then grab a lightning to USB adapter cable and you've turned that lightning port on your, your iPhone or your iPad into a USB port and then any of your USB devices so we're talking microphones audio interfaces MIDI keyboards anything that you want to actually connect you can and you can grab a hub and you can connect multiple things so wow. for instance I, I run a two-channel interface into my my iPhone and then I can use a condenser mic I can use a the good old Shure SM57 to record a, a guitar cab all of the things that we do in our desktop DAWs, we can do on our mobile phone. And the beauty part is that you have that on your phone then. So my studio is in my pocket. I can come into the studio, plug in, record a song or record a demo or record a track, unplug my phone, go out, uh, out and about, and I'm mixing my songs while I'm actually walking around. So it just creates a, this environment of flexibility where you get good quality audio, but it's combined with the convenience of having your studio in your pocket. That's awesome. And, and do people kind of need like the very latest sort of iPad Pro or something to do that? Or is it is what, what sort of generation of, say, iPhone or iPad could they really realistically start doing it on? Yeah, the beauty part is that you don't need the latest and greatest. So I've been using an iPhone 6S for quite a while. I've only just updated to an iPhone 10, but my mm -hmm. I still love my 6S. It, it does a great job. And, and I've been using an iPad Air 2. So these are five, six, seven-year-old devices, and they still have more than enough grunt to run those 32 tracks and to add your effects and your processing. Because the other thing is, if you think, well, I, I, I like to use different plugins, I like to use different effects on my tracks, surely GarageBand can't do that. Well, in in iOS, we have audio unit plugins. So you can use your AUV3 plugins. So you can use EQs, you can use compressors, you can use reverb plugins to actually change your sound. And yes, if you, if you start, like anything, if you start layering up too much, then you probably need some of the newer hardware. If you've got 32 tracks and you've got six effects on every track, then you might need something a bit better. But it, you can really start out, especially when you're starting out. I do recommend, you know, grab yourself a secondhand iPhone or secondhand iPad, or most people have one kicking yeah. around. And if you've got one and you want to get into recording, then there's no better way than to just grab that and then start. And, and the beauty part is you can expand as you go. So as you know, in the home studio, you can start small, you can start yep. with some basic stuff. And then as you grow, as your performances grow, you can grow your studio at the same time. That's cool. And what about sort of the, the end part of it? So I'm talking about sort of mastering and then distribution. I mean, can you master it as well on, on your sort of iPhone? 
Yeah, so you, you, you can. You can you can master. I've mastered in GarageBand as well. There's also dedicated mastering applications. So, oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah, there's, a, there's an application called Final Touch, which is only on the iPad. So if you've got an iPad, you can actually transfer it. And the beauty part of the, the iOS world is you can just send your file straight from your iPhone to your iPad using the AirDrop function, and then you've got it there on your iPad, and you can, do, uh, you can use a full mastering suite of plugins so that you can actually master your song. And then in terms of releasing, yeah, once you've got that final mastered way, file just like you'd export out of your your desktop DAW you just export that out of your your garage band or any of the other DAWs you have on mobile because there's quite a few other ones as well and then you can just release it and distribute it just as you would if you recorded that on any other DAW that's amazing, isn't it? I, I, well, I should say at this point, people should be rushing over to your channel to have a look because if they're not excited by now, if they haven't got their phone and their iPad out by now and thinking about giving it a go, because I do think that sometimes it's a little bit, a bit confining to be in this sort of studio space. And, you know, I recommend um, perhaps taking that mobile device and, you know, going somewhere that you feel really good and makes you want to create music in an environment that you want to do it. I know the acoustics might not be perfect in some other places or what have you, but I really don't think people should get too hung up on that when comparing it to an actual performance and how you might feel in a certain environment, you know. So I'd be heading out bush, you know, and trying to do a recording <laughs> session or something. <laughs> it, it is very cool. And I guess the, the uh, flow on from that is that you can take it anywhere. So if mm. you're having trouble with the noise and you want to have like an isolated, like I use my walk-in robe here, my, my closet here in my bedroom as my vocal booth because I don't have a vocal booth. I don't have yeah, an acoustic right. treatment in mm. my room. So if I want to record a nice clean vocal or a clean guitar part, I'll take it into there and that, that's the, the beauty part of the iPhone is that you can use those uh, power bank batteries. So if you want to power up an audio interface or your, your micro, your condenser mics, you want to have phantom power, you can actually power that using just the same power bank you'd use for your mobile phone and then plug that in through your power bank. And then you can be, like you say, anywhere. You can record at the beach, you can record in the bush, you can record in a cupboard, as I tend to do, and you're good to go. You've got your power and you've got everything. You don't have to worry about running snakes of cables between all of your different places. You can just get yourself set up hit record and like you say get a get a performance in a place where you're most comfortable okay so now without wanting to be negative we've, we've talked about some good pros here so we're talking about the, just then we're talking about the fact that it's mobile that was a, just an awesome pro there the fact that you could just move into a cupboard or my suggestion you could go off to the bush which you know <laughs> or the toilet or the bathroom you know great acoustics <laughs> any, any of any of those things um and and we know that you can use just your regular you could get you know the best um condenser mics and plug it in and use it you can you know probably choose to monitor on awesome headphones and probably outputs to studio monitors i'm guessing as well yep. that type of thing the software is either very cheap or very free um, you can master, you can distribute. So there's there's loads and loads of pros to this. Any cons, any any times that you sort of think, oh, I just wish I was using a door on a desktop. Yeah, there are, and it's it's like most things. There's going to be pros and cons and limitations mm -hmm. of using that. So getting used to the touch screen. Uh, so I, I started recording on a DAW. I actually use the Reaper DAW on my PC, mm -hmm. and using a, a mouse, mm -hmm. mouse and keyboard to actually navigate around. I was getting quite used to it. Then switching to a touch screen, it works really well for some things, not so well for other things. So you do have to get used to that with sort of little fiddly edits and little fades and things that you might be doing in your tracks. That yep. can be a little bit challenging, especially on a smaller screen so that is a challenge some of the software so GarageBand as I use all the time is fantastic but it does have limitations so you're missing things like sends and receives and a lot of that more complicated things that you can do where you can bounce tracks around and do do things like that it, it, there's ways around it and I think one of the reasons that I like GarageBand is that I what I worked out is that when I was using more complicated things I would try to do too much and it would take away from the actual musical performance I, I actually like limitations and I yeah. like being being able to limit myself to what I can do, which actually makes me focus in on the music. So yeah, if you want to have 256 tracks of all the different effects and sends and receives, you may need to go to something like a desktop DAW. But for most folks and, and most people that I talk to, they're not using 32 tracks as it is. They don't even really use sends and receives a whole lot. So they tend to find it's a, it's an advantage. So yes, there's some adapting to do to it. But the beauty part is that if, if you want to go all in like I am and use just GarageBand and just mobile, 
Firebolt, you can, but you can also use it as a gateway. So you can transfer those files, you can export your stems out and bring them into another platform if you do want to do that more detailed editing and mixing and mastering. So you can use it either as everything, or you can use it as your idea pad, your demo recording, or even record your tracks when you're in the moment and then send those tracks over to your other DAW. Cool. And if I'm just going to throw my two cents in here as well, because um, talking about those sort of limitations, I, I'm just talking to our viewers, is one of the charms of Pete's channel that he sort of finds creative ways to work around some of the limitations. I was watching one the other day that you made about exotic time signatures, because <laughs> I gather you can only use the sort of regular sort of four, four or three, four time signatures. And okay. I think you, you've, you've, um, been into a little bit of sort of five eight or something recently so <laughs> so you found a way around that and then i think there was one a while ago if my memory serves me right about um perhaps using an electric guitar as a bass guitar was it or something along those lines it, it uh, was yeah it's, I, I, it's a, I do like to do those sort of things i like to challenge myself to find different ways to do things because a lot of the questions that i get and a lot of people that that watch the videos on my channel are, are either just starting out or they have a very small amount of equipment or gear mm. or, or or ability to to buy or, or budgets because as you know from folks that watch uh, watch your videos we don't always have thousands of dollars to buy all the latest gear and all the latest plugins mm -hmm. we want to way to do something but we don't necessarily want to have to spend money or time or effort to do it so finding ways around it so if you've got just a guitar and you want to get a bass down well yeah you can use some sort of pitch shifting you can use the vocal transformer <laughs> plugins you can you can try different things and i think that's what what i like to do and that's what a lot of folks like about uh, about watching videos that i have on my channel and, and the same on your channel is that they want to see someone experimenting they want to see what is possible yeah, and what can absolutely. be done and even if they don't want to do it they like us to be the guinea pigs and us to to test it out for them and then we can actually say and they can either laugh at us when we fail or that they can come on board and say hey i'm going to give that a try and i'm going to try it out myself that's that's good and and i uh, just a suggestion you know for something you might have to try out that people won't want to try at home what does actually happen if you set fire to a taylor guitar <laughs> I, 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 maybe <laughs> I, don't, I don't know maybe that will get a few views just a suggestion um you might <coughs> may or may not want to try but um, I hope not my poor Taylor would, would not be, be happy with that <laughs> so um, not quite closing yet because I have got a little surprise for you which oh, you should be worried now shouldn't you um, I, actually I should ask you because it's the day before Valentine's as we're recording this so what are you planning this won't go out until afterwards so you've got to stick to this <laughs> What am I planning? Well, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, my wife doesn't watch the channel very much, uh, so I, I doubt she'll watch your channel. So I, I won't get into too much, too much trouble here. But uh, no, we're, we're we're going away as a family. Once you have a family, Valentine's Day just sort of becomes a little bit of a changed affair. Cool. So uh, we've yeah, got a nice. week, weekend away at the beach with the family. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to stay away. I'll, I'll try to only do Garage Band recordings in the early mornings and at night, and actually spend a little bit of time with my wife and with my family. So uh, yes, uh, Valentine's. There should, there should be a saying things. there should be a saying you know look after your wife and your channel will look after itself something something uh, like uh, that yeah, yeah. is it the, the happy wife happy youtube channel is that, uh, <laughs> that how it goes yeah something along need those a, need lines need a better rhyme not, not like we're songwriters or anything mike <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Um, now, before we get on to my final surprise part, I just wanted to close off by asking you, so do you, your prediction of the future, in 10 years' time, are we all going to be recording on mobile devices? It's a very good question, and it's an interesting one that I ponder a lot. I think more of us will be, and I think uh, there's there's definitely an explosion. If you look in terms of the number of people that have some sort of iPad, iPhone, or even Android devices, I know we're focused on iOS here today because they tend to lead the way in terms of music creation, but yes, a lot more people have a lot more processing power in their hands. So if we're going to compare it to what we did before, we had audio, analog audio equipment and the digital stuff was just powerful enough to record the digital equipment our PCs and our Macs got really powerful and now everyone's in the box or 90% of folks are in the box and not mm -hmm, recording to analog mm -hmm, tape. We're mm -hmm. seeing the same revolution happen with mobile. So at the moment, people still see mobile as underpowered and underperforming. As mobile increases with its power and its performance, we're seeing that there's actually no gap. In fact, my iPhone, my new iPhone 10, has more processing power and better performance than the PC that I record on. So yeah, I think we are going to see that more people are going to realise that they have the power 
and that it's easy to do too. It's easy to pick up and get started. And that's the biggest thing for me is removing that barrier to entry because everyone has a song in them and every musician should be recording their own music in some form. And that's why I think channels like yours and channels like mine are important because they're helping people actually create that and actually follow through on their dreams of actually recording their own music. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I, I can only suggest to people, if you're going to get on the bandwagon and get ahead of the curve, then definitely subscribe to Pete's channel, which um, it, it got, your channel name is Pete Johns, but you, you're kind of called Studio Live Today. So, so I'm going to suggest people head on to Studio Live Today. And before we finish off, um, I thought it would be fun because you're my first interviewee, but I'm hoping to do um, more on on the channel and i thought it'd be nice to set up a kind of a league where um where viewers could score you on something and over the long term so you're the first one you'll be top of the league okay so Excellent. and and the way we're going to do this is um we've i haven't got a name for the segment so but it's going to be <laughs> it's perhaps somebody can come up with a good name in the comments um, but i'm going to ask you some 10 quick fire questions they're going to be you know, along the lines of this, it might be say um, Batman versus Superman. And as quickly as you can, I want you to just uh, say which one of the two you will go for. And yeah. I want uh, people in the comments to score your answers uh, between one and 10. So um, over time, when I interview more people, um, you know, we'll set up a little league. and. So no pressure, but you're sort of setting <laughs> the standard here, okay? So, Or um, you could say, I simply can't lose, Mike. I'm going to go with the positive. Okay, <laughs> okay go with that. <laughs> so are you ready? There's some easy ones in here. There's some tricky ones. There's some ones that may embarrass you. I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, there's so some controversial ones. Um, Excellent. So one word answers with no elaboration. One word like answers. Talk, you know I may allow a little elaboration um, <laughs> here and there, um, and we may have to explain some of them. So here we go. We're starting. Um, three, two, one, go. Number one, Beatles or Stones? Beatles. Well, interesting. We've got a sort of a creative person here. Not that the Stones are not creative to any Stones fans out there, but uh, Martin or Taylor? Taylor because I own one. Yeah, me too. Love them. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't mind a Martin, though. Uh, if, uh, if you've got a Martin that you'd like. If anyone, Martin, <laughs> if you'd like to send me a Martin, I will happily switch. I'm, I'm that fickle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had Martin or Taylor. Um, Taylor or both of them? Oh, Taylor. Really? <laughs> Beef, beefy both of them uh, was a larrikin, but uh, Mark Taylor is a national treasure. Okay, we'll cut there for a moment because I know that one of our biggest demographics for both of us, if not our biggest demographic, is from the United States um, and they've got no clue what we're talking about right now. So, guys, just Google <laughs> uh, Google the game of cricket and um, look up uh, Mark Taylor and Ian Botham and um, it, look, you'd have to be desperate to do that. So just ignore this question. <laughs> Give him top marks uh, on that particular <laughs> question. Um and we'll move on to um, uh, pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? Uh, yes, and my wife will hate me for saying that because she despises it, but I could eat an entire pizza with just pineapple. I love it that much. I'm with you there. I could, I could eat an entire pineapple out without the pizza. But <laughs> that's, that's a different thing completely. Um, let's go on to This is not a yay or nay. Um, this, yeah, I've changed it a little bit. So your favourite lyric? My favourite lyric is probably most of Bohemian Rhapsody. So, oh. is this a real life? <laughs> is this a fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. I just love that. Uh, every word of it's that profound. song is my favourite lyric. And yep. yes, very profound I can't indeed. understand the people that say that they don't know what the song's about. It's, it's very, very <laughs> obvious what the song's about, isn't it? But you anyway. kill a man, you go to jail, you're sad about yeah. it. Move on. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> life sucks. <laughs> uh, okay so um where do we get to yes number five that was so uh number six um let's go pc or mac i'm a pc guy uh i know many of people use a mac and i'm gonna squarely put myself on the fence here and say you yes. use whatever works for you your apple users are now going to be so upset with you 
They already are. <laughs> like, you use iPhone and iPad and you use a PC. What is wrong with you? <laughs> yes, uh, I, I, I'm too old to change. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> um, now, this is a, an interesting question because I think uh, you'll have an, uh, an interesting answer on this. Uh, Sex Pistols or The Clash? Oh, got to go the Pistols. Uh, yeah, yeah got to go them. God save the Queen. Uh, yeah, too, too much uh, too, too much defining sounds and defining of the punk culture. And I, I consider myself a bit of a punk at heart. So, uh, yeah, I love the Clash, but Pistols. What's amazing about them is they managed to have a whole punk career and they never wrote one song about goats. <laughs> <laughs> and that was their that was their downside. That was their downfall. Goats, so they would for, have uh, still been popular with the kids today. <laughs> for those of you who think I've now gone crazy, uh, Pete's recently written a punk song on his channel about goats. Whose idea was that, Pete? Uh, that was my nine-year-old daughter who uh, I, I wanted to write a song and I said, I need to write a song in the next three days before the end of the month. What do I write about? And she said, goats. So I said, write punk song about goats. Let's go. There you go. Johnny Rotten didn't have a nine-year-old daughter to benefit <laughs> from, so poor Johnny. Okay, so this one can be controversial in our little world. So Gibson or Fender? Oh, I'd have to go Gibson um, because, well, I don't own one. I own the Epiphoto, the, the junior model of the Gibson, uh, but I love the Les Paul. I love the shape. I love the, the feel of it. I love the, the humbucker pickups and I love the tone you get from a Gibson. So, yeah, sorry to the Fender fans out there. I, if anyone, if someone wants to hand me a Fender Stratocaster for free, I would happily accept it. Uh, but if I was uh, spending my own cash, I'd buy a Gibson. And just as a little side, this is a, a sort of a number 8A, Favorite favorite Gibson player, favorite Les Paul player. Oh uh, no, couldn't could, could, <laughs> could name one. Uh, that, that, that's that's very right, left field. Well. I've I've got pictures going in my head. I'm just like I'm, I'm thinking back to a teenager flipping through Guitar Player magazine, going, uh, I want to be all of these guys. So uh, no, I, I can't I can't even go one. Can't can I okay. narrow it? So don't score him on that one, guys, because it was it was eight it was eight a. You could have said Les Paul, couldn't you? But you know, but that anyway, would have been a great answer because he yep. is an amazing player. He's he's just a phenomenal player. I think he's still alive. Um, uh, yeah, perhaps. He is. Wikipedia, quick. <laughs> quick. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, next, uh, licorice or anchovy? Licorice. I'm a big licorice fan. In fact, the licorice all sorts, you that, that's, you need to get behind them if you're not familiar with them. They're, they're, they're candy, they're licorice, they're, they're everything together, everything that's good in the world. So uh, if you don't know about the licorice all sort, get amongst it because who doesn't uh, I love know? my licorice. Yeah, oh. who, who doesn't know? I mean. They may not know cricket. Well, so here's what you need to do. You need to go. You need to watch a cricket match while eating a bag of licorice all sorts. And you'll have the <laughs> best day of your life. Well, as long as you have a Vegemite sandwich with it. <laughs> and a Foster's beer, which uh, uh, we Ooh, don't drink just no, quietly. We don't drink that rubbish. <laughs> uh, so last question, number 10. So, you know, this is an important question for you because I think the scoring could be close. Um, Ed Sheeran or Taylor Swift? Uh, it's got to be Ed Sheeran. Uh, I, I actually, I think Ed Sheeran is a pretty talented musician. I think he does good work. Uh, Castle on the Hill gets uh, a lot of plays on repeats in this house uh, going around. And um, my relationship with Taylor is, shall we say, complicated, although that's the, the other one. Uh, no, I, I, <laughs> w without insulting Taylor Swift fans, uh, yes, she's, she's not in my uh, demographic or my wheelhouse, shall we say, in terms of musical performance. So you don't have much love for Taylor Swift. I just want to make clear here, though, for you that when I talked about setting fire to Taylor earlier, don't <laughs> don't think about it. OK, that will that will get you. Or it might get you a lot of views. But I think YouTube in this case may ban the video. I ban you. I I'm more of a I'm more of a pacifist, Mike. I, I, I let people be. I uh, li live and let live, and I'm happy for Taylor to live and keep creating whatever it is she calls music uh, for people who like to, to listen to it. Uh, I love it. I love it. Controversial. I don't suppose there's too many Taylor Swift fans on your side at the moment, um, but you know, uh, I you think know. each to their own, I suppose. Pete, it's just been great fun chatting with you. I, I thank you so much for actually doing the interview uh, with me. You're my first interviewee. Keep up the great work on the channel. I just want to say to the people who watch my channel, please go over to uh, Pete's channel. Take a look at it. it. It can open you to a new world. Do make sure you come back to my channel afterwards, <laughs> of course. But, uh, but go over to Pete's. Uh, we can share you. 
Excellent. Thank you. Wrong, it? But, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. It's been it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, and I love the work you do on your channel. Thanks, and man. Uh, everyone should be uh, watching all of your videos and uh, and enjoying them. So keep up the fantastic work. Thank you, buddy. You have a great day. Speak with you soon. Cheers. Okay, folks, thanks very much for watching. If you like this kind of content, then please do like, subscribe, ring the bell on YouTube so you can see more of it. I will be putting some thumbnails to Pete's videos kind of here somewhere, just there and there probably. Please click on one of those and take a look at Pete's channel and I will see you next week.